hey guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is adeze and i'm a youtuber based in port harcourt nigeria <laughs> i don't know what's making me laugh today <laughs> if you're new to this channel you are welcome if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for always clicking on my videos for coming back thank you for your comments your likes your shares everything just Thank you guys, okay? So yeah, in today's video, I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys sent me. Um, I think two weeks, I'll be three weeks or almost a month ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. I asked you guys to ask me questions uh, so that I'll answer just general questions about anything. And I got quite a bit. I think I got like 53 questions. I asked this one on my youtube because most of my q and i do it on instagram okay so if you're not following me on instagram please consider following me on instagram but yeah this one i decided to bring it to youtube so that anybody who is not following me on instagram you know will have an opportunity to ask questions okay and one thing i like about um doing q and a's is that i get to talk about different topics in one like i just like it <laughs> i like talking about so many different topics okay so that's what q a does for me so i really really like it okay so yeah if you'd like to know my answers to your questions then just keep on watching <laughs> Okay, so guys the first question is from Mickey and the question is is there anything you could have done as a single lady that you missed to do before you got married yes yes I wish I had traveled I wish I had traveled alone traveled with friends I wish I had traveled alone actually not even just with friends but I wish I had taken out time to just explore different states in Nigeria, different countries in Africa, outside Africa, even if not with, you know, so many friends, at least with one body or, you know, two other friends or something, I wish I had traveled. Okay. So the next question is from Blessing and she says, I want to open a YouTube channel and I've been confused about the niche stuff. I'm a medical student and also a makeup artist. Do you think incorporating these two and fit into my channel will work? Yeah, it will work, but one thing about having a niche is you might have several interests, but one should stand out more than the other, okay? So for having a niche, it's not like because I'm having because I have this niche, then I can't talk about any other thing in that, you know, in my channel or whatever or in my videos. No. But let your channel be known for one thing. So if you want it to be known for you being a medical student, focus on that, then once in a while you can talk about your makeup and faith and all that. If you want it to be about makeup, focus on that, talk about your medical and faith. Want it to be about faith, talk about faith, let's be about faith. So just choose one. I'm sure there's one thing here that you can talk about all day, all night, or you can, you know, create content around all day, all night. So that should be your major niche, okay? Okay, so the next question is, how long have you been in this YouTube journey? I've been on YouTube for a year plus, over a year. As a stay-at-home mom, how do you manage your finances? And do you still want to have another baby? So yeah, how do I manage my finances? Basically, I just I just manage myself. I don't know. I don't even know how to answer this question. I manage myself. I try to make money on the side. Um, my husband gives me money, gives me money for the house, gives me money for my for my personal use. Like he still gives me an allowance. Yes. <laughs> okay. So his the allowance he gives me plus the money I make from YouTube and any other thing I decide to do or any other thing that I do. Um, yeah, I just try to save as much as I can and as a stay-at-home mom, to be honest, you really don't need to spend so much money because you're at home. It's not like you're going out, you don't need to buy so many outfits. In fact, some of us are on YouTube, part of the reason why we buy outfits is just okay so that it won't be like this one does not have clothes, okay? Even though people like me have not bought clothes in a very long time. This is my husband's t-shirt, by the way. So maybe if you're watching this, I took your t-shirts. And I like it. Like as a stay-at-home mom, you really do not need to spend so much money, okay? Cut down on anything that you think is not necessary, okay? Save as much as possible and also look for ways to make money on the side and know that being a stay-at-home mom is not a permanent arrangement. If it can be a permanent arrangement for you, then that's fine. But for me, it's not a permanent arrangement. So I'm putting things in place. I know that once I decide not to be a stay-at-home mom, it will be easy for me to transition into working and you know making good money okay so yeah just how do i manage my finances i manage by saving the next one is um from vanessa she says i love your videos thank you 
um, what country would you like to visit with your hobby as a holiday? And have you decided if you want to go natural? Okay, what country would would I like to visit with my hobby? I would like to visit Greece. I would like to go back to Dubai again alone. I want to go to one of these Caribbean, one of these islands, all these Bali, Bora Bora, all those kind of places. I want to visit, you know, those kind of places alone with my husband. I keep saying alone with my husband because my husband does not want us to travel without the kids. Like, you people think that me, I'm attached to my kids. My husband is even worse. <laughs> my husband, my husband said he cannot travel without his children. I'm just like, oh God, please. Like, I know that I want to be seeing my children all the time, but please, when it comes to traveling, it's, it's, it's not doing me like that. From Caroline, and she says, hey, Ada, growing up, did you see yourself becoming a mother? Um, with how many children? Did your plans change? Why? Why yes or not? Okay, why yes or no? Okay, so growing up, did I see myself becoming a mother? Yes, there's one thing. I know I've told you guys before that um, I'm one of those people who at this point I still don't know what I want to do with my life. Yeah, yes, but there's one thing I've always known that I want to do with my life, and that is being a mom, okay? Then two, I've always wanted just two children, okay? Right from time even before we got married, I've always told my mom I only wanted two children, okay? I wanted a boy and a girl, but I had I have two girls, okay? So I always wanted two children. Um, did my plans change? Not really. Well, there was a delay between when I got married and when I had my first child. That's the only thing that I'll say plans change somehow. Because I want I was thinking I was going to finish having my kids at a certain age, you know, blah blah blah. So yeah, that's it. But I have always wanted to be a mother. Okay, so the next question is from Chioma and she's asking, Chioma is actually my middle name, so you're my namesake. <laughs> she says, what's the best advice you give to a single lady who isn't married yet? What would you tell her to do with her time now before she's married and is caught up with husband and children responsibility and all that comes with marriage? The best advice I'll give to a single woman right now is what I said before. Take out time to travel, to explore the world, meet people, make new friends, make all kinds of friends. You know, just go and acquire as much practical knowledge. This is practical knowledge I'll call it now. Get as much experience as you can before you get married. It's not like you can't do this since after you get married, like I said. Um, after, you get, after you get married, you can still do some of them, but once you have kids, it drastically reduces your chances and your energy and your time to actually do all these things, okay? So take out time to travel and explore the world and also um, take out time to just know yourself better, to have fun with yourself, to be by yourself, you know? Don't spend all your time thinking of getting married. I see a lot of women who, um, because they are single, they feel like I don't know, they, they occupy their minds with just marriage, 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 marriage. I don't know if I said this thing before. Before I got married, I was one of the last people that, even myself, <laughs> I never thought I was going to get married at the time that I got married because I was never preoccupied with marriage. I remember when I was in university, I had friends who used to go for programs, all these single lady programs, all this uh, university, uni. You are supposed to enjoy your life. You know, all this relationship talk, all this relationship. I'm just like, why are you spending so much? I'm not saying you should not attend such things, okay? You can. But once in a while, just attend them. But don't that that's what all you are preoccupied with. Every time you're reading books about marriage, every time you're trying to marriage, marriage, my marriage, marriage, like no. I don't know, Shah. That's just my own personal advice. So, so if you have your own advice in the comment section, don't come for my own advice. Eh? You are free to say your own in the comment section. <laughs> okay. What do you think about being a YouTuber? How has it affected you? Positively or negatively? Okay, this one is from this one is from Uchi Wenzi. How what do you think about being a YouTuber? How has it affected you positively or negatively? Okay, what I think about being a YouTuber, I actually enjoy being a YouTuber. Like I said, I do YouTube because of I've always been a content creator, so it's not it's not even today I started creating content. I've always been a content creator, I've always been creating content for free. I like entertaining people, I like you know informing people, I like educating people, I like talking with people, I like reaching out to people, I like touching people's lives, you know, by giving them new information or talking to them or helping them in any way that I can. So it's something I actually like doing. So that's why I do YouTube, okay? So positively, that is one good way 
good thing I like about YouTube because it helps me to reach even more people and then I can even see their feedback immediately like oh thank you for saying this I learned something from this thank you for, for highlighting this thank you for talking about this so that's the positive aspect of YouTube that I really really love now the negative aspect believe it or not is the attention <laughs> yes to be honest I really don't like the kind of attention that we sometimes get from YouTube okay the kind of attention I don't like is that sometimes one some people now raise you to one pedestal and now make you the spokesperson for whatever cause that you'd like to talk about for instance let's say i like to talk about marriage i like to talk about you know um you know making the right choice and stuff like that some people will now see you as the epitome of or the epitome whatever of a good marriage like if you want to know how a good marriage should be and that is the go-to person meanwhile we are just here living our life eh they don't come and lose my marriage and not be thinking that oh because i said this this is on the internet my marriage has to be perfect two four seven i have to know what to do in my own marriage i just know that we are still human beings some of us are just sharing our journeys we're just sharing what we, what we are learning along the way okay so don't come and start me speaking at our lives or at our marriages or at our families and be trying to poke holes another negative attention is People that trolls, people that come and leave very nasty comments on our videos, people that come and say very stupid things on the videos. I'm just like, like, dude, can you relax? Like, it's not that serious, you know? So those are the things that I don't really like about YouTube. But one thing I know for sure is that it comes with the territory, the good and the bad. That's why I don't really, you know, talk about some things or react to, react to some things because I know that it comes with territory. Some people just don't like that people like you. That's just the truth. <laughs> it, it might sound it might sound like oh what are you feeling like or whatever but that's just the truth some people don't like the fact that people like you they're like why should people be liking you who do you think you are why do you want to get all the attention for yourself why are you trying to be, be like that but you will see because you're on youtube because people can see your face on youtube then some people that not everybody that watches you actually likes you that's what only people have to know many people watch you because they are waiting to see your downfall they are waiting for you to slip up, they're waiting for you to make a mistake so they can jump on it and jump down your throat and come to your comment section and really trash you, okay? These are people that watch you over and over again. When they drop some comments, they're just like, like sis, I, I, I thought you were for me. I thought you liked me, okay? These are kind of people that, we see, we see all these things now. Once things, when something happens on, you know, on YouTube, you now start seeing people's reactions, people's activities. There are things that people think that we don't know, we don't see. You see their comments on other people's channels, on other people's, you know, posts. You just know that, okay, this person that's watching me and leaves good comments on my videos sometimes, they're not actually, not that they actually like you, just that they're waiting. They're waiting for the day that something will happen, okay? So that's what I don't really like about being a YouTuber, a lot of two-faced people, but ugh. the next one is what do you think about nigerian youtube community what are the unique things about port harcourt youtubers see nobody should come and ask me anything about port harcourt youtubers because from the incident that happened <laughs> i don't want to bring too much attention to it but from the incident that happened you just see that there's really no such thing as port harcourt youtubers or port harcourt community there's nothing like that the truth is that nobody died and made us youtube spokespersons for potakot nobody died and made um you know whoever you know as a popular potakot youtuber no you no, youtube do not come and appoint us as these are the heads of the potakot community okay so nobody should ask me anything about potakot community just everybody stay on your lane do your own thing grow your channel collab with who you want to collab with if you don't want to collab with anybody it's fine just grow your channel and do your own thing the recognition you want, the popularity you want, the money you want, the success you want on YouTube will come to you irrespective of what anybody says or does, okay? So don't be looking at community, community. Just grow your channel, okay? Basically, what makes up the Nigerian YouTube community in the eyes of YouTube, according to my own observation, what makes up YouTube community in Nigeria is just a few Lagos YouTubers and celebrities. Chikena, the rest of you, you're on your own. <laughs> what at what age and year did you get married? I got married at 23 in 2011. Okay. What camera lens do you use? I use the normal M50 kit lens that comes with M50. But before, this is my first time actually filming a sit-down video with my M50. Before I was using my Canon G7X, but I've sold it. So the next question is from Mame. 
She says, do you approve of favoritism by parents amongst their children? These days, I have seen a lot of parents openly saying that they have a favorite child. What's your opinion about this? Hey, God forbid I'll open my mouth and say I have a favorite child. I don't approve of it. It is a very terrible thing to do or to even say out loud. Even if you have a favorite in your head, keep it in your head. Which of which you shouldn't even have a favorite in your head. But even if you do, please keep it in your head. Do not say it out. Do not say it to anybody's hearing. Do not say it to your children's hearing. It is very, very, very bad, okay? Yeah. So the next one is, are you related to Queen Woko here, the actress? I get this question at least. Three people must comment it on each of my videos. No, I am not related to Queen. I do not know her from anywhere. I saw your comments a lot. I even went to check her out on Instagram. I don't see any resemblance. I even reached out to her and asked her that, Nne, Biko, are you seeing any resemblance between two of us? And she said yes, that she sees some resemblance. But yeah, so I uh, I think I see the resemblance kind of. I think it's the forehead plus our eye shape plus our skin color. So yeah, but it's so funny. People people keep asking, telling me that I look like her, I look like her. Uh, because does she have money? Because I need the money part, okay? Let me not be looking at looking like you. I want to have money like you if you have money. So, <laughs> yeah. So the next question is from, is from um, Chioma Ojuku. And she's asking, where is your husband from? My husband is from Delta State. Uh, the next one is from Rose. Rose is asking, do you think someone in Europe can open any activity in Nigeria? Thank you. One love to beautiful princesses. Ah, you can. You can open an activity in Nigeria. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she means business. You can, but to be honest, it's going to be very hard. Nigerians are not trustworthy. I'm sorry to say. The average Nigerian is not trustworthy. And I'm saying it out loud. Anybody that wants to beat me should come to my husband's house and come and beat me. The average Nigerian is not trustworthy. The average Nigerian is looking for how to steal from you. The average Nigerian is looking for how to cheat you. It is just the way it is. I had an encounter recently when I was selling my camera and I was just like, you know what, Nigerians, we all deserve Buhari. If, yes, even me. All of us deserve Buhari. Okay? People will want to cheat you for even small money. Money that will not even reach them to, to you know, enjoy their weekend. They will still want to cheat you out of it. Okay? So, if you ask me, no, do not do it. Except there's someone, maybe your family member, that even if there is, please just, if you're not physically on ground, then just save your money till you, you can be physically on ground. Okay? Um, the next one is, if you could change or alter, it's from Chino So Eze, and she says, if you could change or alter one thing about your life right now, what would it be? If I could change or alter one thing about my life right now, what would it be? Yay! Nah, eh. All these kind of questions when they ask person. <laughs> if I could change or alter one thing about my life right now. <sighs> I don't know. If I can't think about it that quickly, then there's really nothing. Um, if you got a job, okay, this one is from Steel Chips, and she's asking if you got a job offer that paid you two times what your husband makes, but would take you away from the home for three weeks. Would you take it? <laughs> Did you say two times what my husband makes? As in, my husband's salary times two. My husband's income times two. <laughs> I've already resumed now. You are saying take me away from three, away from, uh, home for three weeks. I have already resumed. <laughs> I asked my husband this question because I saw it when you posted it. I asked my husband this question. My husband was like, before uncle, I've already resumed, okay? Yeah. And it's not because... Um, I'll be more comfortable leaving home, but it's just because I know that okay, my husband is someone that I trust a hundred percent with my children. Sometimes he even outmothers me, you know, in being a mother for my children. So since I know that I have a husband that can take care of my children very well, and I'll be the one now making the money and I'm making times too. Ah, <laughs> I don't resume finish. Please, what's your skincare routine? How do you maintain your complexion? Cause I admire your complexion so much. Thank you, girl. Now, the truth is that I really don't do much for my skin. In fact, <laughs> after all this quarantine things that are happening, my skincare products finished. I have been carrying my face like that. Now, pimple is now coming out. I think I had one pimple here. I had some breakouts recently. I now quickly had to go and, you know, look for how to get um, products to use. But basically, my not normal skincare routine that I, do, that I do on a good day, because it's only on a good day that me, I do quick skincare routine. My normal skincare routine is I use an oil-free acne wash, basically Neutrogena. I use Neutrogena oil-free acne wash. I use um, 
um, a toner. I usually use um, what is this name? The witch hazel, Thayer's toner, witch hazel. But I'm thinking of getting a better toner. I don't know. I, don't, I just feel like it's not that great. Um, Thayer's toner. Then I use vitamin C serum and hyaluronic acid from the ordinary on a good day when I remember when I feel like it. <laughs> then I use. Um, I use a moisturizer from Neutrogena, an oil-free moisturizer, and it contains sunscreen as well. But before then, I was using the Eucerin sunscreen, and yeah, what else, what else, what else, what else? I use tea tree oil to spot streaks, like when I have, you know, breakouts, I just put tea tree oil on the breakouts, and um, I exfoliate using the ordinary, I don't know what they call it, Ordinary, that red thing that when you put on your face, it will be very, it will pinch your face very well. I've forgotten the name. Um, but it's an X for it's, it's peel, a hair peeling solution or something. Yeah, I've forgotten the actual scientific name, but it's a peeling solution. So I use it to exfoliate or I just use a physical scrub sometimes. There's all these scrubs that have like um, particles in them. My head is not so good, but sometimes when I'm just lazy, I just use it. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically my skincare routine. But to be honest, I, I don't, I don't, I've not really done a skincare routine because I am not consistent with it. If I do it for one month straight, just know that I have tried. After that one month, I will just start winging it until you know the products finish. So, yeah. Okay, the next question is from Ibiene Allison, and she's asking, do you operate with the saying, "An enemy to my friend is my enemy." And a friend to my enemy is my friend. No, I do not operate with that. To me, it's a very childish mindset to have. An enemy to my friend is not my enemy, except you do something to me directly. Okay, or if what you did to my friend, I was a witness to it, and I could judge and I could see that, ah, oh, you are absolutely a terrible person for doing this thing to my friend, then yes. It's not like you're my enemy, but I'll just give you space, okay? Um, then a friend to my enemy is my friend. No, girl. I don't judge people based on their relationship with my friends, okay? I judge them based on my relationship with them directly. If you do something to me directly, then yeah, I can become, I don't even have enemies, but if we are to become enemies, it will be because of what you did to me directly. Not because of what you did to my friend or what, I beg, because at the end of the day, people, twist situation people tell stories people say things from their own perspectives to favor them if you come into the situation and objectively look at it and see that that person is at fault then that's fine see for me eh, like life is too short the world is about to end like i keep saying and people think i'm joking when i'm saying this thing but the world is about to end but let me not even go into that but that's just the truth the world is coming to an end the events around the world if you read your bible you see the world come to an end life is is literally now too short like if it was too short before now it is even more too short for you to be making enemies or whatever anywhere it's just that i take note of how people treat others so what's it, how you treat my friend i'll take note of it and it will inform how I, I act with you. I won't make you my enemy, but it will make me be careful when I'm dealing with you, okay? And also, in fact, let me drop my phone because this is very, a very important talk, okay? One thing that we should all know is that this saying of not all heroes wear cape, okay? You get that saying? Not all heroes wear cape. Also know that not all those who wear capes are heroes, okay? Let me say it again. Not all those who wear capes are heroes, okay? So be careful of people whose righteous anger, righteous um, reaction you, you get behind, okay? When some people come out and, you know, act like, oh, I'm doing this because I want, I want to help people, I'm doing this because I'm a good person, be careful of how many people you actually get behind because of that. Because a lot of people have their selfish reasons behind what they wear, behind what why they do what they do okay a lot of people have selfish reasons why they do what they do but they won't tell you those selfish reasons they will look for righteous righteous good sounding reasons for why they do what they do and then you because you are seeing them as the helper of the helpless they are fighting for freedom they are speaking for the speechless they are you know standing up for the for the fitless <laughs> I'm just having fun today, you guys. I'm just having fun today, but yeah, like I, I'm saying, I'm saying this thing like I'm, I'm laughing. It's a joke, but it's also not a joke. Okay, be careful who's, you know, 
um, be careful whose um, who's agenda you are agending, okay? <laughs> Be careful who's who, be careful whose agenda you are agending because you don't know people's true intentions. You don't know the heart of man. The heart of man is desperately you can always quote this thing. The Bible wait up. Okay, the Bible sabi pass you. The heart of man is desperately wicked. So when you are jumping behind someone just because they are saying this and saying this, you have to be careful. So, so all I'm trying to say is going by what this person was asking, I don't do enemy of my friend is my enemy, friend of my... I don't, I don't do that. I only look at people's... I judge people based on their actions, based on what they do, based on what they say, you know, based on what the, I experience of them, not only because of what they do to my friends, okay? Then, like I said, if you, if you treat my friend badly and I look at it and I see that you're actually treating my friend badly, it's going to shape the way I act with you, especially if we were friends before. If we were not friends before, then <laughs> to me it's not, it's not like we're friends before, so why do I need to not be friends with you or why do I need to not be enemies with you when we're not like we're friends before? Do you get my point? Anyway, I've talked too much about this thing. Let me talk about another one. Let me just end this video here. There's so many questions I couldn't even answer because this video is going to be too long. So it's either I'm going to answer them in another video or I'll try and answer them I might not do a Q&A video, but I'll try and answer them maybe while vlogging or while doing other things you know in my subsequent videos okay so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope i didn't ramble too much i know i did i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys